Praise the Lord. Come on, everybody. Stand to your feet. Clap your hands. It's Wednesday night. Fire, power, and prayer. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise tonight. Amen. We're going to get started. I want to welcome all those that are tuning online. We're so blessed that you're tuned in tonight. And tonight, it is going to be awesome. Amen. But right now, we're going to praise. We're going to worship. We're going to sing. We're going to shout. Come on, everybody. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah.
everyone, there's a spirit of prayer here tonight. So let's just worship him. Let's give him our full attention. Let's give him our whole hearts and just abandon and surrender anything else that we could be thinking about.
Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Well, we gotta believe that, church. We gotta believe that. See 
Hallelujah. You know, these past few songs, this scripture came up to mind. And I think it's fitting for right now. This is Jesus' words found in the book of John, chapter 14. And he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Powerful. The works that I do, you shall do, and greater works than these. You know, this evening, this is what I want us to do. I want us to put that scripture to use. And I want you to pair up with someone. I want you to pray for that person. But when you pray, I want you to pray in the name of Jesus. And that whatever need they may have, they may be sick in body, you pray for healing. They may need encouragement, you pray for strength. They may need peace. You tell them that God is the God of peace. So I want you right there, wherever you are, I want you to pair up with someone right now. And we're going to sing this song real nice and gently. But I want you to pray for that person. Greater works than these will you do. For all over this place, come on. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Pray for each other right now in the name of Jesus. If you're watching online, we're praying for you. We're going to pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for those that are sick, that are hurting, that are lost. In the name of Jesus, that God will begin to do miracles in our life. In the mighty name of Jesus.
that you're able to do the impossible. And we thank you, God. You're an awesome God, a mighty God. And we put our complete faith and trust in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Oh, we thank you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way tonight, Lord. Give Lord a big hand of praise now, everybody. Come on, begin to thank Him in advance. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to thank the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise your name. We give you glory, God. We give you honor. Come on, somebody bless Him. Somebody praise Him. Somebody give Him a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many already got their breakthrough? Amen. Woo! Something about being in the presence of the Lord. Especially after a long day. Hello, somebody. Traffic. But there's nothing like the moment you walk through those doors into the house of God. Woo! something shifts something takes place something is ignited inside your spirit that you don't leave the place the same come on somebody amen well we're so excited that you're here tonight victory hours you know the mother church of victory hours and we're so blessed that you were here tonight amen we want to welcome everybody here especially those that are here for the very first time we want to greet you. Amen. If there's anybody here for the first time, we just want to acknowledge you and let you know that you're a special guest. Anybody out here for the very first time? Amen. We just want to greet you. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, we want to greet all those that are online. Our V fan, we're so blessed that you tuned in tonight. And we want you to share this with somebody. Be a digital evangelist and tell somebody to get online. But for the rest of us, why don't you get out of your seat? Shake a few hands. Amen. Greet your brother. Greet your sister in the Lord. Go out and spread some love around at this time. the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. As we make our way back to our seats, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and take up our tithes and our offerings here tonight. So if the ushers and usherettes can take their place. If you need an envelope, just slip up your hands. But there's several different ways that we're able to give, and, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But here's what the Word of God reads like in, his, in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 4. It says, He who watches the wind will not sow. And he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Just as you do not know the path of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb of a pregnant woman, so you do not know the activity of God who makes all things. Sow your seed in the morning. Don't be idle in the evening, for you do not know whether morning or evening sowing will succeed or whether both of them alike will be good. You know, sometimes we, we come into the house of God and, and we're challenged to give and you know, everybody who comes up and, and, and talks about tithes and offerings, it's, it's, it's an act of faith, right? You, you come in, I don't know if those of you who 
grew up in a certain upbringing, but I remember being in church as a kid and, and seeing the basket go by, and usually, if I can remember correctly, I think the biggest thing that my mom ever put in that basket was probably a, a $20 bill. And that was a big thing, right? It was a special occasion, right? Things were happening. But most time, you would just hear change drop into the, come on, somebody. Am I, right? Am I in the right place, right? Change that would hit the basket, right? Uh, uh, maybe a dollar or two, right? If you felt, if you felt, right, you felt generous, you drop a $5 in there. Come on, somebody, right? But, but in that upbringing, we, we come into the house of God and we're, we're encouraged to give 10%. Well, 10% is a little bit more than $20. Can I get an amen? Because $20 is basically if you're making 200 bucks a week, right? And that's not too shabby, right? But nowadays, right, you're, you're challenged, amen? But when you're, you're challenged to give 10%, it's, it's an act of faith. And so here the, the writer of Ecclesiastes is saying, man, you don't know what seed is going to prosper. That whatever it is that you give, you don't know if it's the, the, the seed that you gave on Sunday morning or the seed that you gave on Wednesday night or even the seed you gave at V Group. Come on, hello, V Group leaders, right? The, the seed that you sow there on a Tuesday night or a Thursday night or, or the high schoolers that meet on Friday night, right? The seed that you, you don't know which seed is going to prosper. There's a story of a Chinese bamboo uh, tree that, that they say that they sow it and they plant it and they water it fertilize it and they do this for five years and nothing breaks on the surface and after five years they say that it's almost like overnight that a five-week period it grows up to 90 feet tall in five weeks that's a lot of growth right look to the ceiling I believe that that's probably over 90 feet right but it's interesting that most people would think well that thing probably grew in five weeks, but in all actuality, it's been growing for the last five years, right? So when you give, you, you got to give by faith because you don't know if it's, that, like I said, that seed you sowed the Sunday at the beginning of the year or it's that seed that you sowed on the last service of the year. You don't know which one's going to prosper or which one's going to bring the fruit. But the thing is, is continue to sow, right? Because then what's going to end up happening is even when you do see the fruit, then you're going to be able to reap that fruit, but you're not going to stop there because the seed that you sowed the very next time you had the opportunity to give, you're going to reap again, and you continue to reap, and you reap, and you reap, right, as you continue to sow. So it's us being faithful because we don't know which, which seed's going to grow. But the most important thing to understand as we prepare to give tonight is this, that no matter what seed you sow, know this, the Word of God tells us that whatever we've entrusted to Him, He's faithful. Come on, somebody. He's faithful to, to keep that which we have entrusted to him. So if you sowed a seed and maybe you haven't seen a fruit, keep believing and keep sowing because that seed hasn't been lost. It's been entrusted to the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. Amen? Come on. I need some faith in this building, right? Because God is able. Can I get a witness? Why don't we stand tonight? Amen? There's different ways to give. There's the traditional way by envelope, right? You can mail it in for those of you that are online. You could click right on, on the, that you could click on your screen right there. You could scan the QR code. You could text to give. There's many, many ways that we can give tonight. And the awesome thing is that God gives us the opportunity and the privilege to share in the blessing of giving. Amen. And so tonight as we bow our heads and close our eyes, let's pray for the offering. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this privilege that we have to be able to sow into the kingdom. That every seed that is sown, God, I pray that just like that Chinese bamboo shoot, Father God, that it would, in years to come, would shoot 90 feet into the air, God. We would reap a harvest, Lord God, even from seeds we maybe have forgotten that we sowed. We ask you, God, to bless it. In Jesus' name we all say amen and amen. You can make your way up to give this evening. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. As you guys continue to give, I just want to give some exciting announcements that are taking place at our church. Amen. And first up, how many know the cafe is open? Come on, somebody. And what's so special is that they're going to be serving shrimp and vegetable tempura. So make sure you visit the cafe right after service. And if you guys don't know, Pastor Danny always hooks it up in the cafe. So I encourage you guys right after service, visit the cafe. 
taking place all throughout the week. We have women and gang girls specialty groups, and this is gonna be leading all the way up to Women's Convention, which is taking place at the beginning of March, March 1st through the 4th. So ladies, make sure you get registered, get yourself a ticket, make sure you're there, and register at theochino.org. What else, Sunny? Amen. Also, we want to send a special invitation to all those who have lost someone in the past year. We have our Grief Share class, and this class is specialized just for you, for those hard times that you're facing. So we encourage you guys, visit this class. It is a great class. You can go to the conference room upstairs on Thursdays at 7 p.m. So I encourage you, go upstairs and see that information. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And then every Sunday, we do come together for our celebration service at 10 a.m. in the morning. Haven't they been awesome? Amen. They have been powerful. God has been moving within our mega Sundays. Also, following that night, we have our God's Anointed Now Generation service. And if you don't know what that is, it is our young adult and student ministry. So if you have any students or young adults in your family, make sure you bring them on out right here at the Mother Church at 6 p.m. So make sure you bring them on out for that. All right. And then Victory Way will be starting again starting March 9th every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. And something really exciting is we are going to be focusing on discipleship lessons from people of the Bible. So that's, cool. That's super cool. Also, too, following at the same time, we're going to be having a special breakout, and that's going to be our pathway of foundations for faith. And if you don't know what that is, it's going to be a class to build your biblical foundation. So if you want to be get more in your word, if you want to dig deeper, or if you just want to be refreshed, I challenge you guys, when we do our Victory Way, we're going to be having that special breakout right here in the multi-purpose room. So if you need more information, please visit our website at viochino.org. And at this time, you can turn your attention to the screen for some video announcements. We are called to step out of our comfort zone, to step out of what you know. This window and this opportunity is for now. God always speaks to me at these conventions. The people who have the biggest expansion are the people who have the fewest excuses. My role is to keep my hands on that bow with my daughters, my spiritual daughters. It's my time. We have leaders to raise up. We have countries to take. There's an urgency for us to rise up. Take your place. What are you waiting for? in you. There's someone that's going to take their high school in you. I believe I'm talking to some pioneers in the room that are willing to take some risk. Go to another land. Go into their city. Make a difference. God wants to do something new through the third wave generation because he wants to do something new for Victory Outreach International. Come on, let's give the Lord a good hand here tonight. Come on, Mother Church, I think we do better than that. Let's give the Lord a good hand. Give him your best, he deserves it. Hallelujah. Everybody can stand at this time, please. You can feel, as we were worshiping and praising, you could feel that there's some expectancy in the room. I, tr I truly believe that. And I truly believe that God wants to move in a tremendous way here tonight. If you let him, if you let him, let's allow God to be God here tonight. Can we do that, church? Don't worry about what you're going to do later on. Don't worry about work tomorrow. Let's give this time over to God. Because I believe if we do that, he's going to pour out his spirit upon our lives. Can I get an amen here tonight? And if you could please uh, turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 16. We're going to be starting in verse 16. And as you turn there, I want to thank God for my salvation. I truly believe that there, there's any people that should be grateful for their salvation. It is the ministry of Victory Outreach. 
God has been so faithful in our ministry. God has been so faithful in my life. He's, he's kept me. He saved me. He changed me. He rescued me. Not just me, but my family. And I'm so grateful. I'm, I truly am. And out of my gratitude, I want to give God my best. My best years. I want to give him my best because he truly deserves it. I'm grateful for my salvation. Also, our founders. How many love our founders? Come on, somebody. Pastor Sonny Sr., Sister Julie, pioneers of this movement, making sure that we're still focused and on the cutting edge. And even in the midst of everything they have accomplished, they're still investing into this third wave. How many are grateful to have leaders like that? We truly, if there's any people that should be grateful, it's the Mother Church for our founders. Also, the shepherds of the house, our Pastor Sonny Jr., Sister Kim. How many love our pastors? Pastor, if you're watching, Sister Kim, we love you very, very much. And how many know it's, it's, it's a privilege to serve under great leadership. The mother church leadership and our pastors are so awesome. And I know they love this congregation very, very much. Also, Pastor Philip, this is how many love Pastor Philip and the entire ministerial staff. They work very, very hard to, to make sure that our church continues to press on, that continues to stay focused. And I'm so grateful for all the men and the women that work very hard in our church, our staff. Um, also, the God's anointed now generation. I'm a product of the gang. Grateful, Pastor Ray and the entire team. I love the gang very, very much. Also, my dad, I know my dad's watching from Cincinnati. Dad, I love you very, very much. He brought me up in this ministry and taught me many principles that have kept me and taught me how to be loyal to the vision. And for that, I'm so, so grateful. Last but not least, my wife, Alexis, Sister Lex. We're going to be married a year pretty soon, and it's been such a blessing. And I'm so grateful for what God's going to do in our lives in the future. And in Acts chapter 16, do you guys have it? I'm going to be reading out the NIV version. The Bible reads like this. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. And she earned a great deal of money from her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days and finally Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to that spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. Verse 19, when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace, into the place of the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city in, into an uproar. Verse 21, by advocating customs unlawful for Romans to accept our practice, the crowd joined the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. And you thought you were having a bad day. So after they were severely flogged, they were thrown into prison. Then the jailer was commanded them to guard them carefully. Say carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell, fastened their feet in the stock, and about midnight, say about midnight. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and at once the doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. And the jailer called for the lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Then he replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. I mean, that's a powerful passage of scripture. The title of my message here tonight is About Midnight. Everybody bow there and close your eyes. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence that's here. It's so evident, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you will take control, that you will increase and that I will decrease. And that this word that you gave me for your people will pierce their hearts, Lord. Move by your spirit. Have your way. In Jesus' name. And we all say? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Look to your neighbor and say, about midnight. Now, a couple years ago, I was in the city of Amsterdam, Holland. And there's a revival taking place there in Amsterdam, Holland. And if you haven't been, I encourage you to go. And we were having a crusade there to focus on penetrating and reaching that city. And one of the last days of the crusade, we were getting ready to do a rally. A rally where there was a lot of, a lot of young people. And I was there with our pastor. And also Sean Ortiz was there. And we were there. And we noticed there was a, a crowd of people. And as we got closer, we, we realized that 
it was a big singing competition. Kind of like American Idol. How many like American Idol? Right? I know a lot of people used to watch American Idol, right? Come on. Simon Cow, right? Randy, Randy Jackson, right? That's going to be a no for me, dog, right? We used to get all excited in our living room. She's going to Hollywood. Everybody would be clapping all excited, right? Kelly Clarkson, different things like that. Or The Voice. I know there's people that watch The Voice, right? Right. It was, it was a singing competition like that. And Pastor pulled me in with, with Sean Ortiz. And, you know, I'm a young, hungry disciple. And I just want to get close to my pastor. And I thought he was going to give us some wisdom and how to do this rally effectively and to maximize our time here. So he pulls us in. He says, Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have Xavier take the mic. And he's going to sing. And because he can't sing, all these people are going to leave and want to go to our rally. <laughs> True story. That's not my gift. I wish I could sing, but I can't. But how many know tonight that there is power in your praise? And that worship is a weapon. Say it's a weapon. Worship is a weapon. The Bible says there in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, that for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. What does that mean? That, that means that we don't fight the way the world fights. We do not get caught up in civilian affairs. But... In this Christian walk, we are going to face different opposition. But we need to be equipped and prepared spiritually. And there's a lot of weapons. There's the weapon of faith, right? There's the, the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Also, in the name of Jesus Christ, that's a weapon. Speaking in tongues, that's a weapon as well. But worship, there's something about worship. A genuine worship from the heart. The type of worship that gets God's attention. Meaning it doesn't matter how you sound. It doesn't matter who's around you. You're just so grateful for what God has done in your life. And you don't care who knows. You don't care who hears. Because you want to be that type of person that gets God's attention. Worship is a weapon. Now going back to our opening text, we, we see Paul and Silas. And this is the Apostle Paul's. Second missionary journeys from 49 to 52 A.D. And as recorded, Paul is accompanied by Silas. And this missionary journey had taken Paul from Jerusalem north to Antioch of Syria and then westwards towards the interior of Asia Minor, which is now in modern-day modern day Turkey. And, the, and there was a vision from a man there in Macedonia, which is modern-day Greece. And this caused Paul and Silas to... Cross to the Aegean Sea, and this is where they introduced the gospel to the continent of Europe for the very first time. And Paul and his companions find a place of prayer outside the city of Philippi on the Sabbath, and they met a woman by the name of Lydia, a seller of, of purple. There she was baptized, her and her family, and Lyd like I said, Lydia offered hospitality to Paul and Silas, which they accepted. As, and as this chapter continues was the passage of Scripture that I read. Now going back to Acts 16. We're going to keep your Bibles open to that passage. Acts 16, verse 16. They were going to a place of prayer. And they were met by a female slave who had a spirit which she had predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money by her owners of fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High. Who are telling you the ways to be saved. She kept this up for many days. And finally Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said, Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment the Spirit left her. How many know that there is power in the name of Jesus? No, you're not convincing me here tonight. How many know that there is power in the name of Jesus? You see, to the slave girl's owner, this girl was nothing more but a mere money machine. But now that the demon had been casted out, their hustle was over. Seeing that Paul had wrecked their business venture, they then set out to wreck Paul and Silas. Going to verse 19. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. And then they were sent to jail. They were beaten and they were sent to jail. 
But the guard was given a specific command to watch these men carefully. He was given one job. Say one job. How many have said that before? Man, brother, you had one job. You had one job. This Philippian jailer had one job and they were thrown into jail. But they knew, these men knew how to get God's attention. And it was through worship. Say worship. Say worship. Now, first of all, worship, one of my points, the divisions is worship changes your focus. When you and I worship, God realigns our focus. When you're worshiping, you're not concerned with things that do not have no eternal significance. When you truly worship God and you're connecting with him, he will give you direction for your life. When you and I worship, it shifts the focus from me to he. Let me say that again for the people in the back. When you and I worship, it shifts the focus from me to he. Because he is our source. When we declare who he is through our worship, when we say that he is our provider, he is our healer, he is our shelter, he is our rock, He is our foundation. He is our Abba Father. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. You see, when we worship, it shifts our focus and it shifts our our lens from the natural to the supernatural. I don't know about you, but I believe in the supernatural. And the word of God says, greater things will you do. And I've seen too much not to believe. I've seen too much in my life. I've seen too many miracles happen. I've seen too many lives transformed for me not to believe. I believe in the supernatural. But when we don't worship sincerely, we're thinking in the natural. And when we're thinking in the natural, that will cause us not to step out by faith. I believe God wants to pour out his spirit like never before in our church. I truly believe that. But it's when we come in one mind and one accord, when we join the team. Come on, somebody. When we join the team and we step out into the supernatural and we step out into the unknown and saying, God, I may not understand what you're doing, but what I do know is I know that you're in control. I do know that if you are for me, who could be against me? I also know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Now, that's a good place to get excited here tonight because when we worship God, it shifts our focus. We step out into the supernatural, and when we step out in the supernatural, we see the glory of God. And I don't know about you, but in this season, in this third wave, I want to see the glory of God. I want to see the dead rise. I want to see the blind see. I want to see the supernatural. Do you? The question is, do you? The question is, do you? Worship, it it, it shifts our focus. We're not caught up in the mundane day to day. We're not caught up in things that are temporal. We're not just caught up in, in having a good job. We're not caught up in just having a nice house. We're not just caught up in having finance, even though God does want to bless your bless his people. But we're focusing on him because he alone deserves all the glory. He alone deserves all the praise. We're saying, God, I want to be in communion with you. I want to be in connection with you. I don't want to be selfish. I want to be selfless and I want to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Is there anyone like that here tonight? Worship changes our focus. Secondly, worship changes your attitude. Say your attitude. See, Paul and Silas, they found themselves in jail, in prison, and they could have easily had a negative attitude. They were doing the Lord's work. Sometimes you and I have a negative attitude. We find ourselves in different situations, but many times we put ourselves in those situations. God didn't tell us to get that girl's number. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on. Come on, somebody. Should have been there at Saturday, but you were there at the club. Oh, no. Not this church, not this church. That's the church down the street. God didn't tell you to get that credit card. Come on, somebody. Should have took Pastor Al's class. Come on, somebody. Right? Right? Certain decisions that we make and we put ourselves in situations and we ask God to get us out of them. Come on. 
But these men, they had the right attitude. Instead of complaining, they worshiped. Instead of complaining, why are we in this prison? They worshiped and they sang hymns unto God. You see, when we worship, it shifts the atmosphere. When we truly were, something happens in the supernatural. Something happens when we pray. The atmosphere changes. When we have genuine worship from the heart, that gets God's attention. That means that we praise God and we worship no matter what is taking place in our life. No matter the trial, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance. We count in, we count in all joy because we know that God is with us. There's too many people that... They're emotional Christians. That you can see it in their face. When they have a smile and they're, and they're full of joy, you see them here in church and they're clapping and they're shouting. But when they're going through, you can see it on their face. Let me tell you this. The devil cannot read your mind. <laughs> Say that again. The devil... Could not, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. So imagine what that does to the enemy when we're going through trials and we're going through circumstances, but we still come to church with a smile. All hell is breaking loose at home. You don't know where your kids are at, but you're still here worshiping. You're still here praising. You're still here in the front row with your hands lifted up and saying, God, I'm counting in all joy. I'm going to live that life more abundantly because I know you're with me and I know that you're for me and you will work everything out for the good. No matter what's taking place in your life, continue to worship God. He is with you. Don't allow the enemy to trip you up. Don't allow the enemy to isolate you. There's some people, want, and I'm not here to down you. There's some people watching on VFAM, and you're here locally in the area. You need to be in church. You're here. You're watching on YouTube, Facebook. You need to be here in church. Because here we're experiencing community where people you call family, a place you call home. Come to the church house. Come to church. Come to one of our services and watch God move in and through your life. God is with us. Can I get an amen here tonight? When we worship, it changes our focus. When we worship, it changes our attitude. It gives us the right perspective, the right understanding. And thirdly, worship changes your circumstances. Say your circumstances. So going back to our passage, about midnight, say about midnight. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once all the doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. About midnight, their circumstances changed. And their chains fell loose. Now I know right now it's 832. But I, it feels like it's about midnight. <laughs> it feels like it's about midnight. That your circumstance tonight is going to change. You're not going to leave this place the way that you came in. You may find yourself here tonight. Where you feel like you're locked up, you feel like you're imprisoned, you barely made it to church. I'm here to let you know that your chains are going to fall off you. You're not going to leave this place the same. You're going to leave this place full of faith, full of joy, full of peace. Knowing that God is your provider. Knowing that he's moving on your behalf. There's some people here tonight that you need to get your praise back. You possibly have been spectating and watching people praise, but you haven't made it that point to truly praise God anymore. You may have been in this church for many years and you're not praising God anymore. Let the young people do. No, 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 no. This, this, this move of God is not just for the young people. This third wave is for anybody that's willing to jump in the water. 
Is there anyone here tonight that wants to jump in the water with us, that wants to make history, that wants to take the city of Chino and Ontario, Montclair, Fontana, Rancho Cucamonga? Is there anyone that wants to get a little bit wet, that wants to get their praise back, that wants to get their worship back, and saying, God, I'm here as long as I have breath in my lungs. I'm willing to serve you with everything that's within me, whatever you've called me to do, wherever you want me to go, whatever ministry you want me to get a part of, I'll do it because I want to catch the thing third wave of revival. Get your praise back. Get your worship back. Get your song back. There's some people here, you need to stand up and you need to start jumping again. You need to start praising again. You need to start leaping again. Get your praise back. Get your song back. Get your worship back. Don't let the devil come in and steal everything. There's an old song we used to sing, right, Brother Ram? We're going to go into the enemy's camp and take back everything they try to take back. There's some people here, you need to go into the enemy's camp and say, I'm getting my smile back. I'm getting my praise back. I'm getting my worship back. I'm getting my joy back. I'm getting my kids back. I'm getting my calling back. Come on, come on, shift the atmosphere. Shift the atmosphere. God is here in this place and he wants to move. We're going back to the heart of worship. Going back to the heart of worship where it's all about him. It's not about what can God do for me, but it's like, God, what can I do for you? There's some people that have been in church for a while and we get too dignified. We forget what God brought us out of. We forgot that there was a time when no one trusted us. No one even wanted to be around us. No one wanted to answer our calls. Come on. But now you're here in church and you look good and you smell good and you got all your teeth. Come on, somebody, right? But we forget what God brought us out of. Yes, we're, we're a new creation. We don't need to dwell in the past, but there's times where we need to look back and remember. Remember what God did in our lives. And saying, God, my righteousness like filthy rags. I'm nothing without you. It's not about title. It's not about position. It's all about you, God. You know, it's all about him. 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 <laughs> I'm almost done here tonight because I believe God wants to move at the altar call. We're going back. To the heart of worship. See, the circumstances, they changed for Paul and Silas, but they didn't just change for them. See, many of us, look at your neighbor and say, keep it real. <laughs> many of us, if the chains were loose and the doors were open, we would have ran out. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Right? We just would have booked it. We would have said, peace. Deuces, I'm out, right? But that wasn't Paul and Silas's mission. Go back to verse 27. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. Remember, he had one job. His job was to watch them carefully. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. And the jailer called for the lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your entire household. You see, for Paul and Silas, it wasn't just about them being set free for prison, from prison. But they were focused on saying the captives free. So they can... They weren't focused on just getting out of prison. They were focused to set the captives free there in the city of Philippi. And the circumstances changed not just for the jailer but his entire household. I'm here to declare to you tonight that when we go back to the heart of worship, Right now, it's about midnight. Come on, somebody. When we go back to that place, I'm here to declare to you that your worship will not just change your circumstance, but the circumstance of your entire household. 
God is here in this place and he wants to move on your behalf. And the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord. Say it's the Lord's. We used to sing that song, right? What's that famous song? Right? Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. Say turn it around. Say turn it around. Late in the midnight hour, God is going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around. And it's time for you and I to break off those chains of bondage. And say, I'm going to worship God with my entire being. I don't want to be the same anymore. I don't want to talk the same. I don't want to walk the same. I don't want to act the same. I want to be free. I want to worship God with liberty and joy and peace. And saying, God, I'm here and I'm ready to do whatever you've called me to do. Come on, worship. It changes your circumstance. It changes your circumstance. It changes your circumstance. Not just for you, for your household. Your child's not saved. Keep worshiping. Your finances aren't in order. Keep worshiping. All hell is breaking loose. Keep worshiping because God is with us and he's setting the captives free. He's setting them free. He's setting them free. Look to your neighbor say, break off the chains. Say, break off the chains. Break off the chains. The worship team make their way up. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. It's time to break those chains loose. Don't worry what the person next to you thinks. Come on, somebody. Don't worry about what that person thinks. Worry about what God thinks. It's all about Him. It's about Him. A praying church, a worshiping church is a powerful church. And we are the base of Victory Outreach International. And I believe as God moves in our church, it's going to hit the entire outreach. But it starts with you and I. Get your praise back. Get your worship back. It's our time. It's our time to rise up. And it's our time to be the church that God has called us to be. Lift up your hands right there where you're at. Lift up your hands right there where you're at. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Master. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you. You said, I believe. You said. Midnight here in this place, and God wants to show us His glory. You want to go back to the heart of worship? 
you want to realign your focus, you want your circumstances to change, you want to have the right attitude, come to the altar. Come to the altar with your hands lifted up and your hearts lifted and saying, God, I want the type of worship, the type of worship that gets your attention because it's all about you. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. here in this place and he's moving in the supernatural 
There are miracles happening in this place. Hearts are being mended. He's here in this place and talk to him. Worship him. Seek his face. We don't need a song. We just seek alone. We want to be connected to him. Oh, Father, we love you. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify your holy name, Lord. You're so good. You're so awesome. You're all sufficient, Master. Oh, pour out your spirit upon this church, upon your church, Lord. Oh, fill us up. We need your anointing, Lord. Take control. Take us back to the heart of worship where it was all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. Change us. Change our focus. Change our attitude. Change our circumstances, Lord. Oh, Rabba, Baba, Baba, Shandra, Baki, if you speak in that heavenly language, activate that weapon right now. If you speak in that heavenly language, oh, Rabba, Baba, Baba, Shandra, Baki, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shift the atmosphere. Come on, this is not an ordinary, ordinary Wednesday night. God's doing a new thing, He's doing something special here in this place. Oh, Rabba, Baba, Baba, Shandra, Baki, oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. everybody. Uh -huh. tonight I pray God that we would be a church a church that worships you that puts you first in everything that we do not just here in the house of the Lord but at home at our workplace at school wherever we may be oh God we pray God that we would be true worshipers that worship you 
in spirit and in truth, God. We pray tonight, God, that you continue to break those chains loose within the lives of your people. We thank you. We thank you, God, for all the great and mighty miracles that are taking place right now. We love you, Lord. We give you all the honor and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on. Give the Lord a praise clap offering this evening. Come on, Victory Outreach. Woo, powerful, awesome word tonight. How many were blessed tonight, amen? How many were blessed, amen? How many, let me ask you this, how many were a little convicted with the message, right? Learning to worship the Lord despite of your circumstance, amen? Despite how you feel, you continue to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. While we're going to let you go right now, we want to remind you that the Victory Cafe is open. They got shrimp and vegetable tempura. So make sure you stop on back there. And also, this Sunday, we continue with our Sunday morning celebration service, 10 a.m. It's going to be awesome, man. So make sure you come on back. Invite a friend. Invite somebody on out. Come on back this Sunday at 10 a.m. We love you. God bless you. V-Fan, we'll see you this weekend. God bless you, everybody.